guys, uh, in the previous video, we learned how to go ahead and integrate Payment Gateway uh, with the Insta Mojo. We're using Node.js and React.js, and uh, we'll continue from where we left. Uh, we're going to go ahead and talk about how to create this callback URL uh, API and how to save the data into the database once the payment has been made. Okay, so let's do that. So we had named it as a API slash bit slash callback, and that's what we're going to name that this as well. Let's Go ahead, this will be a get um, request. So this will go to API slash bit slash callback, okay? Uh, remember the reason why uh, it's API slash bit is because in the server.js, we are using app.use, right? Like this. If you were directly calling it inside of server.js inside of a main file, then you would have uh, not used uh, just callback, you would have used the full uh, API URL over there, okay? Brilliant. So inside of this, what do we need to do? So we will get some request and response over here. So what do we need to do? Let's begin. So guys, let's first understand what happens uh, when the payment has been made uh, and when it's redirected to this URL. Okay, so let's try that. So I'll just put the card information. Zero one twenty. One one one. Okay, I think my internet is slow. That's why it's taking some time. Just bear with me. Okay, guys, just take him into this page. I'll just enter the security code, and let's see where it takes us. I'm just gonna pause the video because it's taking some time. My internet is slow. Okay, guys, let's see. So it's redirecting. I think the internet connection is getting slow. Just bear with me, guys. Okay, guys, of course, uh, this will not work, but you can see that it's redirected to API bit callback. It's giving me the user ID. Why it's giving me the user ID is because that's what I passed over here while providing the redirect URL from my bit by bit.js and then it's giving me the payment ID also over here and it's giving me the payment request ID which means the payment has been successful if you get the payment ID request ID this means that the payment has been successful okay great then I think that's what we need so all we have to do is get this information so how do we get this information it's there in the URL now in Node.js, we have a package available called URL. So all we have to do is just install that package. So I'll just go over here and say npm install URL and just hit enter. I've already installed it, hence I'm not installed it again. Okay. So this package will actually allow us to uh, basically get the information from the URL, you know, those query strings, where values and everything. So let's try that. So since I've already installed that, I'm just going to require it. You can require it on top as well. In fact, you should require it on top. Why, why require it over here? Okay, then uh, I've created a variable uh, called URL paths, okay, using let. And then I'm saying URL, which is basically uh, URL.pass. And this function is going to accept the request uh, and dot URL and it's going to return all the URL parts. Okay, so let's try that if that works. URL parts. Okay, of course, we'll have to make the payment once again. Zero one twenty one one one. One two two one, submit. Oh, uh, what's gone wrong? Okay, I think the server is down or something. Let me just retry that. Okay, guys, I've retried it, and see, this is what we get in the URL. Okay, so in the URL, I have protocol slashes auth host port host name search. Search is basically the giving you all the search queries, but this is what we're interested in. This query. This query object is going to give me the user ID because that's what we had, remember, 
in the callback URL, right? Uh, then we have the payment ID and we have the payment request ID. So we're going to go ahead and extract this out of uh, this uh, URL uh, that we've got, and we've got this in URL path. So I'm going to go ahead and say dot query, right? So this is basically going to give give me this object this one which will give me user id the payment request id and all of that stuff okay great so over here we'll just say response data we'll create another a variable called response data and we'll just store the information of that inside of the response data so the query basically which contains the um, user ID, payment ID, and all of that information. Okay, so now we're going to check a condition that if response.data, which is basically holding this query, dot, what do we need? We need the, uh, okay, just coming back here. We need the payment ID. So if we are getting the payment ID, it means that the request is complete, payment has been successful. I'm just going to go ahead and say, payment ID okay and if you got that then we'll over here we're going to go ahead and save that information in the database that the payment has been made and everything okay and uh, we will then redirect the user to whichever page we want to redirect by giving a success message that thank you for making the payment right so we'll just do just that okay now I just want to show the structure of the database to you guys so that you can see where exactly we'll be saving that information so I'll go to my user.js model so this is my user.js model which I've used mongoose to create that and then I've used schema to create this user model uh, in which I will store the name, email, phone number, type, password, all of this information and I want to store the information of the package and the bit count in pack for this particular user. Okay and of course you can create another field over here for the request payment request ID I have not done that but you can do it yourself. And then the date and then I'm doing module.export exporting it as a user mongoose.model users user schema so I can import this particular model as user okay and um, I'm going to save the information of the package my package name and the bit count and pack over here okay so basically you can have a custom uh, custom fields for uh, the data that, you, data that you want to store I'm just showing you how to how you would go ahead and store the data in the database at this point okay uh, so let's go ahead further okay so inside of this the first thing we need is basically we need to get the user id also remember if you come over here um was it gone okay we have the user id also because remember we had passed the user id along with the callback url right so we in the url we also have the user id in the query string okay so and we would need the query the user id to be able to save that information in the database so that is why we need to get the user ID, we need to extract the user ID from the response data as well that we have created. So we'll st store that as user ID, okay. And then we will go ahead and store the information in the database. So we'll create an object called bid data. You can create anyone you like, okay, as an empty object. And then we'll say bid data dot package is equal to this and bid data dot uh, uh, bit count and package is 10 so basically we want to set the package and the bit count and pack uh, values for these fields into the database for user.js model okay so we want to do that and then we'll just use a mongoose function to store that information in the database so the first thing we're going to do is include that user model so we'll just go on top over here we'll say const we'll say user is equal to require and I just need to go back a little bit and then I have models folder in which I have users it's in capital users okay I just want to show you my directory structure so if you go to models go to users so this is where I'm trying to access this particular user.js model so I'm just going to include that so it's available to me in the Mong mongoose function okay so going back to the the bit.js uh, right over here where it's gone yeah this one so i'm just going to call a function called uh, find one and update so we'll say user which is a user model which we've just included over here this one 
we'll say user dot find when an update it takes the id of the user to find that user first so id and set its value to user id remember we had extracted out the user id from your this user id right and then we are saying set dollar set and we are setting this data so whatever data we are passing is going to be saved under that user in the fields which is the package and the bit count and pack okay so this will be saved over here and then we're setting new is equal to true uh, and then we are getting a promise uh, the callback uh, so we are getting the user in return if there are any errors, errors then we will catch that okay so we're going to go ahead and update that user uh, with these details that we want to because we know that the payment is successful because we're checking that we've got the payment id we can you can also store the payment id over here as well but i'm not doing that it's just for demonstration purposes the next thing we want to do is basically redirect the user to uh, another page where we'll tell him that okay thank you so much for making the payment and then whatever set of actions that you want to take after that you can do that so let's do that then and let's redirect the users how do we redirect in node.js so to re redirect guys you will just use uh, return response res dot redirect and you will put the um, URL where you want to redirect. So I've already created this payment complete. Remember, this is going to go to the front end uh, using React. So this will go to port 3000 because this is not going to, this request is not going to the um, back end Node.js. So this is just a redirect to this URL. So we'll create this URL. So in app.js, I've already created this URL. Payment complete. You can see this one. Just ignore everything else. Just focus on this one. So you can see uh, router exact path. I'm sure you already know this since you've reached this stage of payment integration. I'm sure you already know about you know how to create routes and everything. Okay, so we put the, set the path to payment complete, and we are going to send this to payment complete uh, component. So we'll create a payment complete component. I've already created one, and all we are doing over here is just let me just ignore this path, and we don't need X XCOs here. okay ignore this one as well for now okay we're just importing react connect if you want to want to use connect that's fine unless you are asking some data over here link and everything prop types navbar folder and banner are just for my project related uh, components component payment complete and just we are exporting at the bottom you can ignore all of this uh, this is just for to let the user know that the you know that um, the payment has been complete so basically uh, what will happen is that once the data has been saved into the database using find one and update then we're going to redirect the user to this url this url we go ahead and render this component okay so let's go ahead and try it and let's see if that's actually working okay great so let's go back let's refresh click on buy bid now it's going to redirect debit card Four two four two four two four two four two. Twenty one one one. Enter. I'll just put the security code now. One two two one. Enter. Brilliant. Awesome, guys. Congratulations. You have successfully taken the payment. You have saved that in the database and you have also redirected the user to the payment status page and says, thank you for your payment. You can go ahead and do whatever action you want to. Now we'll check if that's actually the case. It's been saved in the database. So I'll just go to MongoDB and I'll show that to you guys. Okay, just hold on. Okay, guys, I'm on MongoDB now. So I have, I'm in the user table. You can see this is my username. I don't know if I can zoom it or not. Yeah, I can actually. Okay, and then email address, password, type, and you can see that bit count pack 10, package name bit 100. So it's been saved in the database. Brilliant, guys. Perfect. So, guys, you've learned how to integrate uh, InstaMojo using uh, InstaMojo Node.js module and how to successfully redirect the user to the payment gateway, get the long URL from the user, from the uh, API, and then redirect the user to that URL, make the payment, and then redirect the user back to uh, the thank you page and just before that uh, when you've got the request id for the payment then you will just so store that information in the database or whatever you want to store into the database okay so i hope you did like the video if you did please do subscribe to my channel and share my videos with others okay all right guys take care bye, -bye.